Hey y'all, it is Hans with the Late Night Vision Show. One of your hosts, one of your humble hosts, uh, right here on your weekly show. This is for anybody out there. If you tune in for the first time or if you've seen 300 plus episodes, uh, we're glad that you're here. But this show is for all of you night hunters, dedicated to you, night vision or thermal hunting, whether you come to us for reviews and information, whether you come to us for uh, topic shows about hunting in general, or if you just come for the 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 comedy and the good looks. I don't know. <laughs> you pick. Probably not the last one. But, I don't. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Jason Robertson, owner of Outdoor Legacy. Uh, this was actually my third take to the intro, and we're going to keep this one. How about that? So well, this one was probably this your one. worst. I'm just going to say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're keeping this one. I, I really thought the one. others were fine. We don't. No. We do this whole show in one take, and we kind of have the unspoken rule of. If you screw up in the first, you know, 20 seconds, yeah. then, you know, whoever's introing, you get to start over, but that's it. So, yeah. well, well, guys, I tell you what, today we are going to talk about something that um, it, we're going to explain some, uh, some terms and some specifications and things that we talk about a lot on this show that you hear mm -hmm. other people talking about when you start looking at thermal optics. And one thing we try to do, and it's not easy. But Hans and I like to try to keep this show where people who are experienced in the thermal industry, uh, in thermal optics, that are you know experienced hunters. A lot of guys maybe have more experience than we do hunting at night. Uh, what we want people like that to be able to listen, enjoy the show, find some value. We also want people who are brand spanking new, who don't, who've never looked through a thermal or night vision scope, don't know where to start, but they, they're interested and they, they want to get involved in this sport or they think they do. They're not sure. Maybe they're interested and, and they're listening. And then we've got people that are in between there. So we, it, it's not easy to do, but we want to try to make the shows where they're interesting, enjoyable mm -hmm. and beneficial to everybody and yep. again yeah, i know you can't do everything perfectly and so there's some shows going to be geared more for different people this show i think in our opinion is definitely going to be geared for uh you know maybe not the people that have, have owned you know 15 thermal scopes uh but but there's still going to be people who mm -hmm. have owned a lot of thermal scopes and have done a lot of thermal hunting that they're going to watch this and i, I think some people are going to learn things because there's a lot of new stuff going on with the thermal technology. And that's yeah. what we're going to talk about today. Hans, before yeah. I just jump into this show, why don't you go ahead and tell some of these people that are, you know, maybe new to this, maybe new to this show, don't know who we are, but what we do and how mm -hmm. we can help them as they're maybe, you know, on their journey looking for an optic. Yeah. The, the, the reason for this show is not just to, create content for all of you to get information from, which is uh, one of the big reasons why we did it and why we started. Sure. But we also do this so um, that you know where to go to buy a night vision or thermal scope. And Outdoor Legacy is the company that Jason and I uh, both work for day to day. Now, Jason is the owner of the company, so I guess he basically works for himself. Uh, but I work for Outdoor Legacy full time. We've been doing this for a long time. And we put out this information, not only so you can learn about thermal, but obviously, hopefully you see enough about the show, enough about us that you will give us a chance with your business. And we would really be honored to help you. If you're looking for a brand new night vision or thermal scope, uh, you can do so by either ordering on, go and order online, OutdoorLegacyGear.com, or you can call us directly, 877-350-1818. I know there's a lot of people out there that are maybe being exposed to thermal for the first time and have a lot of basic questions, whether this is your very first thermal or your third or fourth thermal. I know uh, we get guys that are very expense, uh, experienced to the technology, but the, a lot of things have changed in the last couple of years. So they want to kind of get up to speed. What's new? What's coming out? What do you hear? Uh, is this a good value? Is this, you know, a good, in, uh, a good scope for the next season? We'll talk about all of that because this does, by the time you see this video, um, things might be completely different, but we, you know, it's good to have a good solid foundation of understanding how this stuff works. So again, you can call us 877-350-1818, outdoorlegacygear.com. We're going to be talking about uh, thermal resolutions, and we're going to be explaining the basics of all of it, whether uh, as it pertains to price and price fluctuation, uh, ID ranges. We're going to be talking about uh, best case or use scenarios. 
And we're going to try to do that in a way that it makes it easier to understand because there is some misunderstanding as it pertains to resolution. Uh, and, and I'm going to get to part of that here in a little bit. But Jason is going to talk about the prices. And man, that's what probably everybody wants to know about now. What, so what can you expect it, with prices? Yeah, and it's not just prices. So the first thing I want to do is I want to explain these different thermal resolutions because we hear these numbers thrown around. And they don't always mean anything to you when you're you're new to thermal. And again, there's going to be a confusion even once you, you know a little bit about it and maybe have a scope. So the first thing I want to talk about, just real brief, is kind of a history. 384 resolution, as we call it, which is 384. Okay, okay let, me, let me explain this. Resolution is really two numbers. You have a horizontal and a vertical measurement. So let's use a common one, 384 by 288. What that means is there are 384 individual pixels on that thermal sensor, which is basically like a camera sensor, uh, 384 pixels horizontally left to right. 288 is how many pixels there are horizontal, uh, sorry, vertically, uh, top to bottom. Okay. So 384 by 288. That is a very common resolution. Something that, mm -hmm. that, you know, you've probably heard people say, Hey, 384. Well, that's just shortening it up. So to say in the, the second part, you're just talking about the first, the first horizontal number, 384. Now, 384 by 288, or, or sometimes there's other small variations, by the way, it could be, you know, 260 or 216 or, but it's normally 384 by 288. So that's what we're going to call 384. And that has been a very common resolution. And another, the, by far the, the second most common is 640. And that's normally 640 by 480 pixels or maybe 512 pixels. And that's pretty much what all the scopes have been as long as we've been doing this now for over a decade, that's really where you were going to buy. You were going to buy a 384 or a 640 resolution. There used to be some optics that not many, but a few that dabbled under the 384 resolution. There was some 320 by 240s that they were, you know, they were around. That was really close to 384, but, but down into the 200s, like 200 resolution on the wide side. And they just weren't ever really popular. But what's happened is this technology has gotten better. Uh, there's now some 256 by 192 resolution optics. Hans and I just reviewed uh, a couple of those scopes recently on this show, the AGM Rattler mm -hmm. version yep. twos, 256 units. And they're actually, they're getting better. I mean, even though they're still a low resolution, they're better than they used to be as, as just, you know, again, technology improves. So now where Hans and I have spent all these years talking about two things, 384, 640, which do you want? 384, 640, that's it. Now we have 256, 384, 640, and now we have moved up into the HD, high definition, I like to call them ultra high resolution sensors of 1024 and 1280. This is something that is new to this market uh, in the last 18 to 24 months. I mean, a couple years now, it's the first time we've ever seen anything above 640 in the thermal optic market. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a really, really big change. So again, it's been easy for us and easy for the consumer. Do you want 3D4? You want 640? You know, you want mustard or mayonnaise. And now it's, there's all these other numbers and options. So we want to kind of, that's where we're going to explain today mm -hmm. kind of what some of this means. So I want to do, uh, I'm going to talk about some pricing and, and, and kind of what this means to you. So generally speaking, and we're broad brushing with a lot of things here today. Okay. We're not talking about every single optic and every single category. Everything doesn't always fall into nice little boxes like we want them to, but generally speaking, they do. So when we look at these scopes that are 256 by 192 resolution or somewhere in that variation, 
honestly, we call those sub entry level. They're not quite up to what we would call an entry level standard. And we'll talk about some, some ID ranges, Hans will in a minute and what you can expect from them. But this is current for late summer, early fall of, of 2024. And the reason I'm giving this warning before I start talking about prices and, and even these resolutions is this stuff is changing quickly. It's getting better. Prices are coming down. So you might watch this a few months, uh, you know, six months, a, a year after we film this, and it could be very different. But right now, uh, late, late summer, early fall, 2024, if you're looking at a 256 uh, resolution optic, you're going to be looking somewhere in that 800 to a thousand dollar range. Now I'm also going to give you averages. Okay. You might find something a little bit cheaper, something a little more expensive, We're just kind of going in where most of those optics, uh, uh, the quality optics anyway, are going to lie. When we move up from there, we get into the 384 by 288. Again, that's kind of the standard, what we call standard resolution. And, and 384 is where we say entry level uh, thermal scopes start. All right. Mm -hmm. Those optics right now are going to be in that 1700 to $3,500 range. Uh, definitely 1700 is going to be on your bottom end 3500 is going to be on your top end and that's a big change because these 384 resolution scopes not that long ago were, were $4,500 and more and and you couldn't get one for really under $2,000 and and, and the, the quality stuff was 2500 to three we're seeing that shift down to $2,500 and less. And, and again, mm -hmm. now even below $2,000. And, and again, the quality gets better. The features go up. There's just, you're getting more bang for your buck. So again, somewhere in that $1,700 to $3,000 really is where you're going to be. A couple scopes above that that have got some mm -hmm. special features and things. Next, we move into our 640 resolution. So the common is 640 by 480 or 640 by 512. You're just getting even better image quality, all right? Even better than the 384. And we're going to see those prices in the $3,000 to $6,000 average. This is really crazy because just a few months ago, if you'd asked me these numbers, I would have said really probably 4,000 to 7,000. And I might have go, okay, 3,500, but we actually have got some scopes now that are below 2,999. I mean, mm -hmm. getting into the 27, 2,800 dollar for 640, but your average is going to be in that three to 6,000. Now there are some outliers. There's a couple scopes, really, really, really good, more than a couple, a handful, really good quality, maybe some certain things they're really good at and strong points. And those are going to be in your seven to $10,000 range. All right. Those are your, your top end scopes. Now what gets weird here is when I talk about the new, the HD, the, the ultra high resolution optics in the, there, there's several resolutions, 1024 by 768 or 1024 by 1024. Okay. We've also got 1280 by 1024. Right now we're going to lump those together. Okay. Uh, we're talking, by the way, these optics I'm talking about are scopes, not handhelds. Mm -hmm. Handheld prices are going to be different, but most people that are starting, they're going to start in the scope category. I should have said that from the beginning. We're talking about scopes. So right now we're lumping anything 1024 and anything 1280 together because there's, there's n not very many of these optics. Okay. There's only three or four at this point, And we know there's going to be more, more are absolutely coming down uh, the pipe, but we've, you know, right now, as it is, we're lumping those together. You're going to be looking in the seven to eight thousand dollar average, and there is one outlier with the uh, the infrared outdoor RS seventy five was the very first optic mm -hmm. ever to hit the market above six forty. It's a twelve eighty, and that unit started at eighteen thousand. Right now, I think it's about sixteen thousand and holding. And I know some of you guys just swallowed your bubble gum and and you know choked on your coffee. 
But that is, again, the extreme. But again, when brand new technology like the market's mm -hmm. never seen. It's yeah. got to come out of these very high prices. But we're already seeing now, even, even infrared outdoor themselves, their new 1024 scope is $7,000. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're, even the, it's not just like, well, they just did that and everybody else is killing them. No, they're the ones who've, who've come down now to 7,000 with their 1024 scope. So I know this has confused a few people, especially when I said there's seven to $10,000 640 mm -hmm. scopes and you go what does that even mean why would anybody spend that when you can spend this we're not going to get into each one every one of these scopes and explain it and give the justification some of those higher end scopes you're paying for because they're made in the usa they're using yeah. more expensive sensors that are made here in the usa you you know guys you know the production cost of doing things solely in the u.s it's very expensive especially when it comes to electronics so there's some of that in mm -hmm. there also uh you know one of the 640 scopes in that is is the the infrared outdoor hybrid 75. it's right. got a giant 75 millimeter lens it's a 640 uh, uh 640 resolution with a four power base mag in our opinion it is absolutely one of the best long range, you know, thermal optics on the market. And it even beats out uh, several of these, you know, 1024 optics, if, if you're talking about just long range. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute, kind of how these magnifications play in. So again, I've talked a long time here. I'm fixing to turn this over to Hans. I, I wanted to explain a little bit about the resolutions and a little bit about the, the current pricing, but here's, I'm going to put my little bow on this before we let Hans go to point two. And that is simply this. Generally speaking, the higher the resolution, 256, 384, 640, 1024, 1280, the, the higher you go, the better image quality you're gonna get. Again, broad brush, but that's what it means. That's why it costs more as you go up because you're getting a better thermal sensor mm. with better resolution. Hans? Yeah. Take yeah, absolutely. So let's get to what all of this means. So what does $6,000 get you? Or what does $3,000 get you? And I want to talk about that into practical purpose and in the form of ID ranges and, and effective shooting ranges. We can talk a little bit about that too, but how far can I look out with a 384 scope or a 640 scope and know that I'm looking at a coyote or look, know that I'm looking at a, a hog or a deer and what does that money get you? So let's start out with, um, with 256 resolution and, and what you, and we just, it's perfect timing. Cause here recently, like Jason said, we did a, a review of the Rattler 256, uh, scopes. So the, the very, we like to use very, um, uh, conservative ID ranges because we don't, you know, it, it takes a lot of things into account, your experience and that kind of thing. But the average person picking up the scope, whether it be for the first time, uh, how far can you look out with a 256 resolution scope and know exactly that you're looking at a coyote or a hog? And that range with a 256 scope, just like we said in the video, is going to be about 100 to 125 yards. Now, these ID ranges really depend on the conditions outside, whether it's been raining, whether it's very muggy, humid, high dew point, or if it's a nice clear night. Optimal uh, and ideal viewing conditions, you're going to be able to see a little bit further. Uh, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, those ranges are going to be cut down a little bit. But on average, uh, a you know picking up a 256 resolution scope, you'll be able to look out about 100 to 125 yards and ID a target. Those are made for close range situations, definitely not for long range IDing or long range shooting. Now, a 384 resolution, which we consider standard resolution, that's really where quality huntable. Uh, thermal optics really start, you know, you being able to pick that up and effectively hunt at a lot of different ranges and ID at, at a good distance. So the average 384 resolution scope, the ID range of that uh, is really anywhere from 200 to 400 yards, depending on the magnification level, depending on the quality of the optic and also the conditions outside. So you can count on pretty much every scope that you pick up uh, 384 resolution that you can ID a coyote, hog, deer, 200 to 400 yards. Uh, also with a 640 resolution scope, that's going to range anywhere from 400 out to 800 yards. And that's a pretty wide gap. But again, 
it depends on the quality of the optic and the magnification level. But, you know, that low end at 400 yards, that's a pretty long way, um, especially out to, to 800 yards with a, with a quality 640 scope. And then as you're moving up into 1024 or even 1280 resolution, that ID range can be anywhere from 600 yards to 1,000 plus yards. I mean, we're talking about a long, long ID range. Now, let's talk briefly, and this isn't on the notes, but I want to talk about this, Jason. Effective shooting range. Um, people yeah. say, you know, I'm okay, glad you brought this up. I was, I, yeah. I, I'd scratch a note here that was like, make a note to say, we're not yeah. saying you need to shoot this far. Yeah. So I'm glad you're so, bringing this up. So yeah, 256 ID range, 125 yards, 384, 200 to 400. Does that mean I can shoot 400 yards with a 384 scope? Or does that mean that I can shoot 400 to 800 yards with a 640 scope? What Jason and I are both going to tell you is effective shooting range is a lot different than ID range. Again, absolutely, it, it really depends on the base magnification. The lower the base magnification, the more of a challenge it is going to take to be a longer shot. But what what we consider a long shot at night might be different than somebody else, but really 300 yards and 300 yards plus is a very long shot at night with a digital thermal optic. I mean, it's, that's a long shot. Now that doesn't mean you can't take a long shot like that. Doesn't mean you can't make a long shot like that, but to consistently do it time and time again, 300 plus yards, uh, in in many different types of conditions is a is a challenge. Now the good thing is, most of your hunting, most people hunting at night, uh, the vast majority of the shots are going to be under 200 yards. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, a 256 resolution scope effective shooting range. Honestly, I mean, for a good, safe, quality, safe shooting distance. I'm going to say a hundred yards and in, I mean, even yeah. may, maybe even more closer. Now there's going to be people that I say agree. further than that, but to safely shoot, know exactly what you're shooting at hundred yards and in a 384 resolution scope. I'm going to say 200 yards and in maybe 250 ish uh, yards, effective shooting range. And again, these are f conservative and these are meant to incorporate everybody, meaning beginners and experience, wow. but um, average 250 yards, a 640 resolution scope, a good one. I mean, three to 400 yards, but 400 yards that's is really, long, that's a long way. Long I mean, ways. I would in the daytime, that's it, a long, long way. I, I can't imagine, you know, Jason and I've been doing this for a long time and I cannot imagine going out there and consistently making a, a good, uh, you know, shot on a coyote at 400 yards every time. Yeah. It, it's just, it's very difficult with a digital I scope. Imagine doing it once, but go ahead. And <laughs> honestly, and I will say, I mean, a 1024 or 1280 scope probably does get you a little bit further, uh, a little bit further effective shooting range than a 640. It's hard to know exactly how much really, but, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more. But also what I want to clear up is a misconception, Jason, and you probably hear this too is a, a person will call in and say they're looking at a 384 or a 640 resolution scope and they're wondering if 640 resolution is worth the money is it worth the step mm -hmm. up and the the short answer is yes and no who knows you know we got to we got to talk about it but when you start talking about ID ranges and you say you know your ID range with a 384 resolution scope is about 2 300 yards maybe 400 yards depending on optic and then the 640 resolution scope is 400 to 800 yards. There's a lot of people that will say, and I, surprisingly, a lot of people will say, well, I don't need the, the 640 scope then because all I need to do is, is ID at 300 yards and, and that 640 scope is not going to do anything for me. Well, kind of. I mean, you, the people, what people don't understand is even in shorter ranges, that 640 resolution scope is going to be much sharper, much clearer, much more detail in the background, much the, the edges of the target are going to be more clearly defined. So just because a 640 resolution has a further ID range, that doesn't mean it, it has no benefit in shorter range distances. It's going to be a lot more pixels on the sensor. Uh, obviously, when you look at a 
a 1080 resolution TV versus a 4K. A 4K, I mean, the images just kind of jump out of the screen at you. Um, you know, that that a little bit of the difference between a 384 and a 640. I mean, everything's going to pop a little bit better. You're going to have a lot more detail. So yes, 640, you will see a benefit at two and 300 yards and in with a 640 scope. It's not just for long range IDing and detecting. It does give you a lot more detail in that in that closer range situation and, and a lot more uh, sharpness and like I said, uh, uh, just clarity. Yeah, so uh, I wanna take that and, and I'm gonna transition to another topic, but I wanna just finish that off and say, you know, I use this, I use analogies of trucks a lot of times when I'm talking to people. And the reason is we, we almost all own a truck, drive a truck with something we're familiar with. And one of the things I like to compare to is let's say you're only going to shoot 200 yards and in, which, and I say only, by the way, guys, I don't, I don't shoot past that. I mean, vast majority of my shots are under a hundred, but I don't, we're not long range shooters, especially at night. So I'm not, I'm not let's say, let's say 200 yards. If you buy a good 384 resolution scope, like what Hans was saying, you're not going to kill any more coyotes or hogs because you bought a 640 resolution scope and you're still hunting within that 50 to 200 yards. You stole my line. That's what, is, I, that's what I say that all the time. You're not going to kill more coyotes because you got a 64. Yeah. It's going to look better. There is a but. The video, there's a B-U-T. Yeah. 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 The but is there's luxury. Yeah. Okay. When we buy a pickup truck, um, we have the option of getting heated and cooled leather seats. Well, nobody buys that truck with the heated and cooled leather seats and says, well, you know what? I'm going to buy that because I'm going to be able to tow a bigger trailer and I'm going to get better gas mileage. You go, no, it's because it's comfortable. It's because mm -hmm. it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, hey, I'm getting in again. Maybe you go, well, I'm not on buy heated and cooled leather seats. Th that's <laughs> fine. And that may be the choice you make here. I don't need the 640. I don't need the luxury. But think of it as that kind of an option. This right. is something that is going to make my experience more enjoyable. Hey, maybe it's, again, more comfortable seats. Maybe it's cloth or maybe I need rubber. And that's what the, the mats that it's got. It's got a better radio. It's got a different screen. It's got a backup camera. All mm -hmm. those things I'm using, again, trucks. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with them. And we know they don't pull more. They don't get yeah. better gas mileage. And those things, you can't even see them on the outside of the truck. But they're things that make yeah. our experience yeah. better when we're driving down the road, right. um, just like air conditioning and an AM and FM radio. So it just depends on where you want to be within your budget I, and, and what have you. Go ahead, Hans. I also, before we, well, it's probably better um, suited in your section on the work we're going to talk about okay. next. But being, and I, maybe this is a good transition, making sure that you're, direct, you're choosing an optic that has the 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 best base magnification there what you're you doing not necessarily the high the the highest resolution because the last thing you want to do is oh man i really want that that nice 640 resolution scope but to be able to fit it within your budget you have to choose an optic with a too low a base magnification for what you're trying to do so that's where a lot of people really when you're talking about yeah. jason crossing that line from 384 to 640 and and you get that question a lot because of pricing so you can tell when somebody's mm. budget's 3500 because they'll say you know talk to me a little bit about the the pulsar thermion uh, xq50 which is a three power base magnification and also talk to me about uh, you know, how does that differ or, or what's better? You know, the Adder TS 35 640, yeah, right. which is a two power, you know, mm -hmm. higher resolution, but lower base magnification. And you have to say, well, well, what are you doing with it? Well, I'm coyote hunting and all of my shots are over 150 yards. Well, they're talking about the, talking about those two optics because they're kind of co close in price, but you know, what is, what, what do you need? And that higher base magnification might be more important than higher resolution, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay. And I'll segue, segue right here. into, yeah, what you're, I think we, but I think we left some people. All right. I think there's some people that are new to this that are like, he just started talking Greek and here's what I want to explain. So I, Hans, you did that. That's exactly what I was going to, but I want to explain first before we get to there, what this, what he means by this. And so You've got to remember this, and a lot, remember this. You may not know this about thermal optics. The vast majority, there's a couple exceptions out there, uh, AGM Clarion, uh, but but you know, take these out. You you have your base 
optical magnification. That means it's the, the, the lowest magnification and you get it through the glass lens or, or actually germanium. So compare that to you've got a Leupold three to nine. Okay, what's that mean? It means it starts at three power and it goes to nine power, right? But you can zoom that thing up, crank that over to, to nine power. And what did you lose? Nothing but a little bit of field of view. Image is still as beautiful as it was. Well, when we talk about, let's say, a three power, 384 resolution scope, same thing like your three power Leopold, it starts at three, can't go lower. And you are getting that through a lens. So that is the best image quality you're ever going to get on that optic right there. But what happens is, is when you zoom, you're zooming up digitally. Okay, you're basically zooming in on the, 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 the screen. And what that means is, and that's not a good explanation of it. You're, you're zooming in, it kind of is, digitally. <laughs> you're going to get more pixelated, a grainier mm -hmm. image. It's kind of like this. Everybody's got a, a cell phone camera. Take that thing and zoom all the way in on something that's out there. You know, a deer that's at 200 yards out there in your pasture. Zoom in, take that picture and go show your buddy. And he's like, I don't know, is that a deer? Is there something out <laughs> yeah. there? I can't tell why. It's all grainy. Uh -huh. Well, the thing is, the camera on your phone probably has a resolution 10 times higher than what we're talking about here. So it's much more exaggerated. So when you take a 384 resolution scope, and it's, let's just say, it's a three power base magnification, and you zoom that up to a six power, your resolution cut from 384 by 288 to 192 by 144. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cut that in half, your image cut in half, the number of pixels you're looking at cut in half. That image is not anything like what it was when mm -hmm. you first turned your scope on. It's your base mag. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a 640. So if you, you take a two power 640, you double that to four power. Your effective resolution is now a 320 by 240. That's worse than where you started with a 384. And it's done digitally, so it's going to have more grain and, and, and be rougher image than it would be, again, through the optic, right in front of the, the glass or, or germanium, right in front of the sensor with no zooming. Yeah. So what Hans is, is trying to talk about here, or not trying, did, and did a good job of explaining, is magnification matters. The first thing we're going to talk to you about, or one of the first things before we get into scopes is, figuring out what magnification that you need based on your shooting distance. And I know that maybe you may not know because you're new to this. That's where we're here to help. And, and we've got enough experience and, and dealt with enough people, thousands of customers that we know what most people like and what people don't like and where the average skill set is. And so we can help you figure out where you need to be. So what Hans is saying is, let's say that you've got a, a three power 384 resolution optic and you're comfortable shooting let's just say 100 120 yards without zooming up okay so you got a beautiful image but let's say instead you say i really want 640 but the magnification cost more the higher the magnification the higher the price goes i can only afford a 640 resolution scope that's a two power all right but that i want 640 so i get this beautiful image right but you might get to 50 yards and have to zoom that optic up because you don't feel like the two power is enough. So you zoom it up one time. You go to four power. You go, and I got four. That's better than three. It is. But you're at a 320 by 240 resolution, which is worse than where you started with the 384. And it's done digitally. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this statement. Even if, which some optics do allow this. You, you don't have to zoom up every time in two, four, six, eight. You don't have to double it. Yeah. Most optics do, but not, not, not all of them. You don't have to do that. Right. Even if you took that two power to a three power, I would still argue that your image quality is probably not going to be better than the 384 resolution optic because you've digitally magnified. And here's the thing. Think about this, guys. When you spend more money to get the 640 resolution but the first thing you do when you get out there on a hunt is digitally zoom it up you are giving up what you just paid for 
You're giving it away and you're going to end up most of the time worse than you would have if you would have bought the lower resolution, higher base magnification. Now, if that's all Greek to you, I'm sorry. You can call us and we'll be happy to try to explain it uh, <laughs> with some more real life examples. So here's, I think if we, again, put a nut or put this in a, a nutshell or a shell, in a nutshell. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I, I have no sounds. idea, man, but I'm yeah. just going to let you go ahead and roll with it. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> no. he, here's what I would say. If you're going to compare a 384 and a 640, you can only fairly do it if you compare apples and apples. I need a three power 384. Then you need a three power 640. Mm -hmm. Compare that. Well, I need a two power 384. Then you need a two power 640. I need mean, that way. Everything is scaling, yeah. and that's what you want to do. You want to make sure it's apples and apples. Again, you go. Oh my gosh, I still don't know what you guys are talking about. Call us. We're going to help you. This is the best thing that you can do. When you call us, and and you know you say, hey, I want to buy from Outdoor Legacy. I like you guys. I want to buy from you, but I don't know what to buy. We're, that's who we're here to help. We're here to help mm -hmm. our customers before the sale and after the sale. Yeah. What we want to make sure is that you get the best optic that suits your exact hunting needs. We want to know about your terrain. We want to know about your weather. We want to know about your rifle. We've got a lot of questions that we're going to ask you. And all the time you're telling us this, we're taking scopes off a list. Nope, nope, nope. That ain't going to work. Mentally, a lot of times, that ain't going to work mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. And we get all the way down and go, okay, the, this is where this guy needs to be. And we're going to also do that within your budget. So a lot of times guys will say, we get them, you know, Hey, this is what we recommend. Well, why didn't you recommend this? Well, because that's $500 or a thousand dollars more than you said you wanted to spend, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. well, okay. That's why maybe we didn't recommend a 640 or that's why we didn't recommend a 1024 optic. So mm -hmm. again, sticking within your budget is the big deal, but knowing exactly what you're getting. And I hope that with this show, we didn't make things more confusing. I hope that it, it gives you some things to think about. And Hans, I'm going to let you put a, a bow on this, but my, the way I want to end is this. The, again, the higher the resolution, the better the image quality. Hans has given you some very realistic ID and shooting ranges. And again, you may be one of those guys that can stretch some of that out and maybe you mm -hmm. can shoot further than he's talking about. And, and that's fine. There's always exceptions to the rule. We're going with the averages and I can promise you for both Hans and I, he quoted some numbers that we aren't comfortable shooting. With. Yeah. I mean, we, we know our own abilities and everybody, there's a guy's got way better abilities than us when it comes to long range. Shooting. Yeah. I, yeah um, so we, absolutely. we fully admit that, but I think that, then we get to this magnification versus resolution. It's where things get muddy uh, a little bit. And, and that's where the mistake starts of, I want a 640 optic. That's got the best image quality. So that's the one I'm buying. And here's mm -hmm. my budget. Well, mm -hmm. well, everything has to line up. Budget, <laughs> resolution, and the yeah. magnification that you need. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot there and there's a lot to di dissect and a lot that we talked about. But... Uh, as always, you know, these shows are informative. Um, you know, we we do this uh, on a daily basis. We're, we're out testing these optics. There might be people that look at our website and say, hey, you're not selling this optic or you're not selling this brand. You know, why is that? Um, you, you know, the best thing to do if you're trying to decide is, is make sure you get as much information as you can. That's why we produce these shows, the Late Night Vision Show, all the reviews, all these top topic shows as well. Is to help you make a good informed decision. Um, but really, even though we do provide all of this information uh, on our show, the best way to come to a final decision is to talk with uh, to talk with one of us. And you can do so 877-350-1818, outdoorlegacygear.com. You can go, the great thing about the website, and it's a tool and a feature that a lot of people use. They'll go in and, because we have a feature, you can search thermal scopes, uh, you know, under 3000, under 4,000, under 5,000. So, you know, they'll, they'll go in, they'll go to our website. They'll, they'll kind of think about their budget. They'll look at the scopes and the price range. And then 
a lot of times when y'all call us, you said, you know, these are the scopes that I can afford. These are the ones I want to talk about. And from there, we can really narrow it down to, to two or three really, really good options. Um, and then from there, you're going to make a good decision. Uh, so we would love to earn your business. Again, OutdoorLegacyGear.com, 877-350-1818. You can see more videos uh, on the Late Night Vision Show at our website, thelatenightvisionshow.com. Post all of them there. We also do Two Minute Tuesday, which is a great little quick episode that we put out every Tuesday morning. But we talk about our, um, you know, any spe uh, specials or promotions that are going on, any sales that the manufacturers are doing, uh, any new releases, any new optics that uh, have arrived and are ready to ship. Uh, and we also talk about what our topic is going to be for the following show that Thursday. So that's Two Minute Tuesday right here, the Late Night Vision Show every Tuesday morning. You can find more reviews, hunts, uh, shows like this on my channel, my YouTube channel, Hans ETX, uh, as well as you can find Outdoor Legacy and the Late Night Vision Show on, and Hans ETX on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and on YouTube. So that's a lot of stuff that's going a lot. on there, Jason. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, hope, we hope you enjoyed the show. Hope that it helped a little bit. Again, mm -hmm. We are here to help you take the confusion uh, out of this. If you feel this show confused you more, uh, again, you call us. We'll walk you. We'll hold your hand. We'll walk you right through this. We'll help you figure out what is exactly right for you and then help you with that purchase when you're ready. So, guys, if you liked this, if you didn't like this, give us another chance. <laughs> Come back <laughs> next Thursday right here on YouTube. We hope to see y'all again then. Between now and then, y'all stay safe.